I see in this kind of work the same line that was inaugurated by Torbjörn. The idea is that uh, the myth should be both made contemporary, made more topical, and at the same time we should discover the value of the myth for its power and not only for it. It's not something that you keep in, in the museum, you know, uh, or not just something for the philologist. Uh, the myth is something which must be vibrant and alive. And this is what he is telling us. Uh, besides, uh, I, I think, obviously, um, that was translating into the language of world literature back then. That was, uh, hey, uh, English ballads uh, in our case. But she certainly was aiming, uh, catering to uh, Indians as well as English and maybe people from anywhere in the world. And the same is for Amitabh Ghosh. Amitabh Ghosh obviously, uh, well, he's older than Torbjörn when she wrote that thing and he is more famous and he has more means uh, at his disposal. Uh, but basically, he's been doing the same thing. He has used uh, whatever fame he has in order to bring to the world's attention uh, what he considers a very urgent matter. That is to say that we should be thinking along different lines. And this is particularly urgent in the case of climate change. I think that uh, it makes perfect sense that this thing is uh, stemming from the Sundarbans. Uh, it arrived to the Sundarbans maybe from the Middle East in, in some mysterious way, and it's uh, bouncing to uh, America and the rest of the world. Um, your observation that in Toru that wrote her book, 
It may not have been exactly for the Indian or European audience, but it's just for kindred spirits elsewhere, which I think is a very nice thought that we can take, you know, as a, as an uh, uh, as a model of the writer reader relationship. But even more, I uh, in your discussion of Amitabh Ghosh, I especially uh, was struck by your line. Uh, in the hungry tide, he showcases the bomb baby version of the story, but in the jungle nama, he endorses it. Uh, I think these are two very good words that uh, often in literature we see within a book the changing relationship of a character to a story or to their reality. But uh, you show that even a writer can, in dealing with the same material over a span of 10 or 15 years, have a different approach towards it. And actually, I wonder if this, uh, this thought of yours can be used as a starting point for a wider exploration of how, how many Indian writers begin with the sort of rationalist, realist novel as a starting point in writing. And slowly, in a way, if I was put in one phrase, they move from rationalism to mysticism of some kind. And in this case, uh, and that sometimes requires not only abandoning the novel form itself or something else, in order to uh, fulfill your goal, your rhetorical goal. So that's all I wanted to say. These are thoughts that uh, I never had before and I only have had as a result of what you have said today. Thank you so much. Love, 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 love. Thank you for, for making this point. Uh, actually, well, there's not much that I can say behind you. Uh, I'll be very interested in, in, in reading your work on that regarding the uh, deed, because I've been working on that over uh, some time now. And uh, well, actually, there is uh, this anthropological line which intersects much of 19th century and early 20th century literature. You, you see that, for instance, also in Katapura, there's a kind of anthropological gaze uh, where, where, they, where the author is offering uh, knowledge uh, about the people. And there's, a, there's an interesting uh, line in Gun Island, where, uh, so you have another by Antabuk, uh, where you have uh, the mentor of the protagonist, uh, he's an Italian lady, uh, Cinta. Uh, and uh, she says, well, you Marxists are so very much interested uh, about what is in the subalterns' bellies, uh, but you are hardly ever interested in whatever is in their mind, and that's what you should be interested in. So I think it's very, uh, very interesting. Uh, in a way, well, the, the novel as a genre is extremely powerful, uh, and it lends itself to Obviously, a huge number, it's extremely versatile. But uh, on the other hand, uh, it poses constraints that sometimes are left unseen. And, uh, and that's, uh, I think, why uh, we should at least know uh, about this. Namaskar, respected as speaker and honorable audience, first of all I want to congratulate the English department for today's international seminar. Your lecture is very nice. I would like to know who is the original author of Arabian Nights. Thank you. Who is the original author of Arabian Nights? For all of us. Yes, <laughs> there are short names in my name, but I don't know who is original. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. In fact, I had a little question, but I'll ask afterwards. Um, you said, uh, we'll do to be polite of women in the context of what those that wrote for the Indian audience. But we'll discuss that later, since uh, we have another session now. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for uh, very engaging talk. I think your question, we would start exploring that to answer seriously. And uh, I thank uh, the entire audience, everyone, for this session. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Thank you. That was a very interesting session. I now invite uh, all of you to session six uh, to be chaired by me. And in this, we have three speakers, three presentations, four speakers, three presentations. I first invite Professor Gurcharan Behera to please come onto the dais. Then I invite Dr. Asis Day to please come onto the dais. And the third presentation is to be made by Dr. Tharana Rani Dhanga Machi and Sparsha Mishra. Sparsha Mishra is an uh, MS student working with uh, uh, Tharana. Tharana teaches in Kalahandi University and she's a MS student there. Professor Gurjan Behera is a senior retired professor of English. He worked in BHU for almost uh, close to 12 years and uh, he's basically from Odisha and uh, after an illustrious career working in colleges of Odisha, he finally went to BHU and he retired and he's now settled in Bhubaneswar. He's extremely, uh, <coughs> he has an expertise in translation, he has translated Homer's work into Odia, and he also he translates both ways, Odia into English and English into Odia. Next, uh, I introduce Asis Day, Dr. Asis Day, uh, and you know he would like to introduce himself, as he told me. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, in fact, you know I'm trying to hurry through this session because at uh, 12, we have a presentation, online presentation by Harish Trivedi. He's wow. originally supposed to deliver the keynote address. So I still have to uh, ask you to be very tight in your presentation. Uh, I guess we could, we could make it uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. Because we need to set up. Uh, Belongs to the LP 
part of colonization, people minds and uh, industries came up. But Putimunda had a wider canvas covering the colonial and post-colonial period, extending beyond the national northern city up to 1977. In between the two texts, he gave us another cover, colonial adhikara, the rights of the forest, published in 1977, that is the saga of Bissa Munda in the colonial period. The theory of intertextual is based upon the fact that no text or no work of art can exist alone <laughs> independently. Some previous texts infiltrated certain texts and takes part in the construction of the text. These previous texts have also been infected by the text prior to them. Texts are thus bound up to the chain of intertextuality. The intertextual process may happen with or without the knowledge of the author. Maybe deliberate or all intentional. Jack Perdas wrote text of textuality, conceptualizing the text text relationship. It indicated in the definition of text as interweaving of the traces of several other texts. Mikhail Bakhtin's theory of dialogism postulates that a discourse is in dialogue in relationship with the previous discourse. In Julia Krista, who has elaborately theorized intertextuality. According to her, every text is an intertext because it participates in the construction of some other text. The text is the, I quote, absorption and transformation of another. Rudolf Bach's view that every writing is a rewriting, and a writing is, with the quote, a quotation without a quotation mark, is the radical exposition of intertextual. So with the progress of time, the continuity and other difference between the arts part is underscored by intertextual. The main issue to take off six to at this is the evolution of tribal consciousness. Well, for the indicating between the tribal consciousness, so different addresses go to the post-emergence of 1977. Your consciousness is to see, or consciousness is to not as something given, not as something essential, or an immutable. It is to see as a changeable category, even Ever evolving, changing with the changing contextual relationship. When you talk of the self consciousness, the self cannot be seen segregated from the social, as Bakhtin would agree. The social is constituted of the self. Hence, consciousness of the self includes the social forces that frame the self. This is anti essentialist position approach adopted in this way. The reading of Pallada reveals the tribal consciousness as an amorphous, extended simplicity, and emotions expressed at isolated at individual level. But Chotipunda Choti does it as complex and collective experience. Further, the tribal anger and protest. I don't know that Chotipunda Mahdi served in Quran for a long time and lived with the tribals, worked for them, participated in their ceremonies and rituals, and it gained some kind of inwardness about their culture, their customs, traditions, their songs and dances. He had huge knowledge about them in the construction of the cultural landscape of Parada and, and Amrutar Santa. The Parada due to conspiracy of the, uh, in the Parada due to conspiracy of the forest god, the credulous patriarchus Kudani, uses his land and takes loan from the Salka, who keeps him and his son Mandiya as bonded devourers for the repayment of loan. To describe the Salka, the master of the bonded devourers, Mahathir calls him Munda, Munda Kinali, dead by all, acting through the dead hunter practicing primitive society. 